Are you planning a trip to Zion National Park, but you're not exactly sure where to stay? Imagine if in less than the time it takes to watch this video, you will have a very good idea of which option is gonna be best for you and your family. My name is Sierra McCleave. I built three tiny houses, very, very close to Zion National Park. I grew up in Southern Utah, I'm a local and native. I have the inside scoop. Let's get into it. I'm honestly just gonna get into the mean potatoes like value of this video right away. I think one of the best options for lodging for an amazing experience at Zion National Park is actually gonna be in Hurricane or Apple Valley. So let me tell you why, a few reasons. Your price per night's gonna be cheaper. For example, I just stayed in a motel in Springdale. That's a small town right outside the main Zion National Park entrance. I had to get some very early footage, so I stayed in a motel. The cheapest I could find for one night was $185. The next one was $235. The next one after that was $338 and on up for one night. The tiny house is here. Let's just check them real quick here. Moonlit, the one next door to this, 98 a night right now. This one here, 122. My other one down the road, 122. Whether that be in my tiny houses or an Airbnb in Hurricane or Apple Valley, you're gonna be paying less per night, okay? Not only that, you're gonna have access to grocery stores and gas stations that are just slightly further away from the park. So the cost on that's gonna be less as well. So saving money is a big reason. Number two, I like the options for just outside because on like Airbnb, for example, you can find something that's gonna fit the needs of your entire group. So maybe you're going with a large group, you need two tiny houses because you wanna fit 10 people and you want to grill one night. You have that option and it's still less money. Okay, it's not just about saving money, but staying in either Hurricane or Apple Valley gives you more access, I think, to other experiences to add to your Zion National Park visit, okay? So if you want to also try mountain biking, you're now equidistant from Zion and from all of those other things, horseback riding, road biking, ATV trails, and those experiences, because they're not in the park or in Springdale, like they're gonna be a little bit less money as well. One of the things that comes up most if you search like best things to do in Southern Utah is visit Sand Hollow Reservoir. You can do jet skiing, you can do tubing, cliff jumping. It is absolutely beautiful. And it is the same amount of time to drive from the tiny houses in Apple Valley to Sand Hollow as it is to drive to Zion. So you could add that into your adventure as well if you wanted to add one more layered experience to your vacation. Another reason I suggest staying just a little bit further away other than saving money and the access to the other experiences. So it's about a 30 to 40 minute drive into the park from either of those places. That's gonna give you time to review your list and to stop one more place at a grocery store where you're gonna have a lot more availability of options if you need supplies and gear and not pay an arm and a leg for it. Speaking of layering on your experience and just making it absolutely epic, like we talked about with maybe visiting Sand Hollow, staying in a unique space just adds another element of excitement and adventure to what will already be an incredible vacation at Zion National Park. Lastly, if you really wanna see the start of the night, Apple Valley is gonna be the choice because no light pollution. Okay, so one of your other options for lodging at Zion National Park is to stay in Springdale. So Springdale is a small, cute little town right outside of the main south entrance of Zion National Park. It is a very cute town, okay? In Springdale, you'll have access to motels, hotels, and I think a couple bed and breakfast off. And they have some great options from like simple motel, like kind of basics to really, really bougie and fancy. Any of the things in Springdale will just have a higher price tag. Here's a shot of that motel that I stayed in, Zion Park Motel. It was a cute little place uh, and it did the trick and uh, the front desk, they were super nice. But there's lots of these little places all over in Springdale. So let's talk about some of the benefits of staying in Springdale. Uh, you're very, very close to the park. So like the entrance is right there. So that will be good if you're wanting to jam pack your day and get as many hikes in as you want. Most of your motels will let you leave your car there, obviously. So then you can just shuttle or walk or e-bike. Parking could be beneficial. However, keep in mind some of these hotels and motels are actually quite a ways away from the entrance. So you are gonna either have to wait for the shuttle or potentially e-bike in, which case you might have to pay for parking anyway. So just keep that in mind. Another benefit to staying in Springdale is if you like meeting new people, it can be very social because it's so busy. And depending on the time of year, I do mean a lot and a lot of people. So that would be another benefit is people are walking the streets um, 
walking in and out of the park all day, um, visiting the restaurants, biking. So if you like being around a lot of people and maybe you wanna meet some new people, that could be a really great benefit to staying in Springdale. All right, so let's talk about option number three, which I just recently learned was an option. There are actually designated campsites in Zion National Park. Now, one thing I learned, the campsite that is right by the visitor center, that one they said books out about six months in advance, and the one just to the north of the visitor center, uh, that one they said books out about two weeks in advance. Now, I think this would be a great option for people who really like to tent camp or car camp, who wanna bring all their supplies with them and really just focus on hiking and experiencing Zion. One of the drawbacks could be if you forget something or maybe you didn't come as prepared as you thought, you will need to go into Springdale, uh, which is not far, and get your groceries and they'll just be at a higher price. I'm gonna do more research on this, but when I drove by, there were definitely like cars parked there too. So I'm guessing that your reservation includes at least one or two parking spaces so you don't have to worry about parking. You can just walk over to the visitor center and then shuttle. So I would say if you are looking to get in a ton of hikes or you really love tent camping and bringing everything with you, um, camping at Zion could be awesome. If you're interested in knowing more and want me to do a whole video on that option, go ahead and let me know down below. Um, I didn't see any, I'm sure they have bathrooms, but I didn't specifically see like a place to shower. So I'll check that out for next time. If you're interested, let me know down below. If you're wanting to shower regularly, uh, just to be safe, I would say probably Springdale or like the surrounding areas, like I mentioned. So there you go. Now you know three options of where to stay when you visit Zion National Park. Let's review real quick. You can stay in Springdale, just book in advance, hotel, motel, bed and breakfast type thing. Um, research your parking a little bit so you kind of make sure that that's dialed in and ready to go. If tent or car camping is your thing and you know pretty well in advance when you're going, you can book one of the two campsites there in Zion. Just remember one needs six months notice approximately and the other one needs two weeks notice. All that you can check out on the Zion National Park website. We'll link that below. Lastly, like I mentioned, my personal favorite for all the reasons I mentioned above, staying in an Airbnb or unique type dwelling in Hurricane or Apple Valley really gives you so many options, helps you save some money. If that at all sounds like something that benefit you and your group on your trip to Zion, I will go ahead and link to my tiny houses below. You can check those out and see if it's gonna be a good fit for you guys. All right, guys, so I hope this video on the best lodging options for a visit near Zion National Park was helpful. Save this video to review before your trip and subscribe for more tips on adventuring, relaxing, vacationing in Zion National Park, Southern Utah from a Southern Utah local. We'll see you soon.